how there's all these little snippets of history that's just being preserved, but it's not in your face, is it? Welcome back to our channel. We're Paul and Tan and we're escaping crowds travelling around Australia in our troopy. We're continuing on our journey around Tassie with some incredible sights to share with you from the East Coast. Please hit that like, subscribe and share button if you're enjoying our content. Enjoy the video! If you're watching our content on your big screen, subscribing isn't as easy as it is on your mobile device. To make it easy for you, we've added a QR code, so all you have to do is scan it with your phone, it'll take you to our channel page, then hit subscribe. It's that easy. We appreciate your support. Mayfair, yeah. Bay, Mayfair Camping Ground, I think it's called Mayfair, is it Mayfield? Mayfield, sorry. Mayfield Camping Ground, uh, which is a little bit up the, uh, north of where we are right now. So we're really sad to say goodbye to Port Arthur. It's absolutely stunning part of the world. Everything about this place is the same. It's just looking amazing. Look at it. Yeah, we're um, heading back through Eagle Hawk Neck and up, not up the coast. The roads, I'm not sure, looking at the maps, the roads look like they're not sealed, but I don't think they'll be bad because I'm pretty sure they're well travelled. Um, and we're going up to a place called Mayfield Bay camping area. What we Hopefully. have to, hey? Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. What we have to take into consideration is the fact that it is a long weekend this weekend. Um, and we haven't booked anywhere, so we're just going to really do doing what we always do and just winging it. Um, but that's okay. Um, we've got a couple of things planned. Um, couple, well, there's lots of places to camp up in the northeast, so we're uh, looking forward to exploring that. But we're going to be moving along a bit quicker, aren't we, for the next few days? Because we feel like we lagged behind a little bit now. So we've got just less than three weeks. Is that right? Just less than three weeks, that's I think. Left, here. left yeah. 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 So we've got a bit of a, a bit to do. Go, got a fair bit to do still. So yeah, but um. Yeah, today's trip should be quite nice. We're moving away from the coast, as I said, but we'll end up back on the coast a bit later. So, stick with us. We're um, on a dirt track which Google has sent us on to, which I think is the quickest way to get up the east coast from where we were, um, unless you want to go around the major highways, which means backtracking. So, yeah, it's bizarre, isn't it? It's bizarre, like this is, it says actually, it's, it's not very good because, well, it, it is good because it's a shortcut, but when you get to the start of this road, there's a sign up that says, um, four-wheel drive suitable for four-wheel drive doesn't it yeah. and but it doesn't tell you that until you get to the start of the track so if you go into Google you just think you're on a main road because it doesn't differentiate um, so yeah I, I find it a bit bizarre we've got hammer on and it does say that it's a track but unless you've got hammer maps you wouldn't know that so I mean it's not four-wheel drivey really is it there's a there's a few bits that are a bit goat tracky, but like only gra um, that hard sort of limestone, but the rest of it's pretty much like this, which is, which is okay. So anyway, I just wanted to have a chat about campground etiquette. 
Paul's rolling his eyes because he knows what's coming. Um, last night at our campground, it's a, it was a caravan park. So, you know, you get all sorts of travellers and that's fabulous because you need to have a caravan park camp every now and again and that's good. But we had a hire camper van pull in, a big one, with six people in it, six adults who came in and I'm going to guess it was their first night in the camper van but they came in quite late didn't they I mean they would have come in at seven o'clock and from seven o'clock through till 12 30 a.m they were banging and crashing and laughing and slamming cupboards and probably setting up the van but it was absolutely ridiculous to the point where the whole caravan park, that's all you could hear. And they were just laughing and just being pains in the neck. And to the end where Paul had to zip the, unzip the tent and tell them to be quiet. But it was 12.30 a.m. Now, if you're going to get a camper van, surely you have a bit of a go at setting it up or get somewhere early enough that you can set it up before the 10 o'clock cut-off time like it's only common courtesy isn't it it was so bad and you know we left this morning at about eight o'clock and they were still asleep just to show a bit of consideration people This is the remains of the Liz Dillon salt works which was settled in when? The 1830s it all begins. Yeah. The story begins in the 1830s. So in the 1990s the Parks and Wildlife Service took over conservation of this. I just love how there's all these little snippets of history that's just being preserved but it's not in your face is it? Like we had to really <laughs> drive down a few roads to find this one. They're all in these amazing spots. Check this out. It's just beautiful. It's just a spectacular spot. There's a house behind it. Somebody's property is right behind it. Imagine having this chunk of history on your doorstep. So nearly 200 years old. Hasn't weathered very well, has it? I guess it would get some pretty incredible um, weather here, like bad weather. Far out. So there's an old cottage that has been restored, which is up behind it. Um, I'll show you when we get back up so, there. That place through there, not the brown one, the white one. One of those we think was the original yeah. cottage. The, the front one, the yeah, small the front, front one. one yeah. Was the original cottage from the salt works. Um, and it was bought and restored only in the last, what did they say, 1980, didn't they? 
1980 or something. In, in recent years anyway, um, it's been restored and had some extra um, additions to it, but it's, it's private. private, so you can't go and have a look at it, but that would have been where the manager of the salt works lived. So yeah, a very cool little find. I actually love looking around stuff like that. I'm on the hunt for some really nice shells. There's a little boat house around here. We're going to go and have a look at it. Might be some good photos to be had. This is Kelverden Beach conservation area. Got a good tip from Facebook that this was a pretty cool little spot to have a bit of a fossic around so doing just that Spiky Bridge, which was a convict built bridge in the 1800s. How cool is this? And I can, there's a little lizard there. Well, there's a couple of them. Blending in amongst the spikes. Bay, Fraysonet. Um, we managed to score a campsite for two nights and we are now at the Cape Torville walk circuit. There's a lighthouse here. We've just come up this really steep um, embankment, we'll call it an embankment <laughs> hill. We've come up this steep hill to get here. Um, yeah, lots of people here today. The weather is glorious which is not before time, I reckon. Yeah, it's good to see. It's good to see. It's given us some hope. Yeah. <laughs> um, I knew Tassie had come good. Yeah, I hope it stays good. We've got two days here. It needs to stay good so we can get a couple of walks in at least. Anyway, this little walk is part of the 60 Tasmanian short walks um, list. We've done a few already actually, but I don't think this one's very long, but it'll be good. It's probably one of the nicest views I think I've seen in a very long time and we've seen some really good ones that's just yeah no words for that wow and the, the water I mean it's just so incredibly blue be awesome to see some dolphins in there that would just top it off or anything really anything I think that's a boat in the distance does that count <sighs> magical it really is Cape Torville lighthouse it's 
find out some information about it. Oh, it's only a baby. 1971. It's only a wee one. Just about to get out at Sleepy Bay and then we're going to head to the Information Bay see about these walks and what the go is um, yeah let's go and see what Sleepy Bay has to offer there's absolutely no filter on this footage how ridiculous is that water it is so clear. Good morning. We're in our first full day at Coles Bay this morning. We um, have come out to the information centre just to get some get the lay of the land. And this is just a little 10 minute walk from the information centre called the Great Oyster Bay Walk, which is not, it's not a big walk. So, <laughs> But we're going to look at a place called the Hazards it's a viewing area. The hazards, I think, is like a big rock formation on the top of Mount Amos or something like that. So we, oh, you probably get to see it from here. It's just a short walk. So we're going back. We'll go back to the car after this, and then we're going to do a longer one. It's a bit windy this morning. It's just very windy this morning. We're in for a, an absolute blast of a day with the wind. Um, it's going to get up pretty strong this afternoon, so we thought we'd come out this morning and do our walk. Okay, the hazards. I think that is all the hazards. <laughs> it's pretty spectacular. just started the wine glass bay lookout track um, we're only doing going to the lookout so about an hour and a half round trip about three kilometers with a few steps I believe and every man and his dog I reckon in Tasmania are here today <laughs> so the wind is good at this side there's hardly any so we're very protected which is a bonus so far it's pretty spectacular On the return leg now.
so it's 7.30 and here we are at Coles Bay which is a beautiful spot it's absolutely blowing its butt off out there um, and we've just come in side because it's getting really cold as well sun's out so that's really nice and this is the view from our rooftop tent our rooftop tent at Droopy and it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful we're in a top little spot in caravan park we've just started to make dinner about an hour ago um, in the weather and we were going to have this delicious roast meal it was going to be all cooked by now and then we've um checked it and uh, we've run out of gas like ages before we checked it so <laughs> we've got this very very dodgily semi-cooked piece of roast meat and vegetables which we're thinking oh great what are we gonna do um, so we've put it in here we've put it in the travel buddy um, we've managed to get all the little trays in there and we have yeah hopefully in about three hours time <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we'll be able to eat tonight it takes the travel buddy if anyone's got one I mean they are really great and handy and everything but they do take a long time so it's uh I can still touch the door so it's yeah it's got a while to go That's yeah right. yeah we haven't got anywhere else to be have we job tomorrow though get a gas bottle get a gas refill if we can yeah i'll have to do a bit of research and find out where we can get what one what day is it tomorrow saturday saturday we should be right servos usually do them don't they mm, no. mm, probably not in tasmania no. unless you want to put petrol in it oh where do you get them Which from would be a good idea. where do you get them from i don't know we'll i don't think we're going to find an anaconda here <laughs> <laughs> we'll find one somewhere anyone yes help no send help we'll be right um yeah we, we've actually that gas bottle's been awesome i don't know when the last time we put gas in it was before we left home yeah just before yeah i filled it up before we yeah okay arrived. all right so three so months three and a half months and the rest. yeah yeah good job oh well had to happen didn't it just not tonight <laughs> <laughs> anyway we're all good we're just gonna maybe watch some youtube maybe We've probably got some YouTube to watch. We can do a that. Hours to kill. Yeah, yeah, so we'll um, bunker down. But as I showed you, it's a stunning spot. Um, the wind is absolutely just howling this afternoon. It is. Have you looked at the water? Yeah, I'm not exaggerating. I think this is quite unusual for down here. Um, anyway, don't know what it's going to be like tomorrow, but we're leaving here tomorrow. We're going to head up the coast a little bit more towards Bichano and St. Helens. Um, yeah, and whatever else is in between. And we're not sure, because it is a long weekend. So we will endeavor to get in somewhere. But in the meantime, if and when we get our meal cooked, we'll uh, show you what we cooked in a travel buddy. <laughs> That's what it's for. <laughs> yeah, but it's not supposed to take four hours. But anyway, <laughs> see you soon. Thanks again for watching and your support through hitting that like and subscribe button is very much appreciated. Don't forget to tune in next week as we continue to showcase big things on this magnificent little island. If you're keen to watch some of our other trip episodes, here are some links. Thanks again and we'll see you all in the next episode. Cheers!